The alien abduction encounter of Luli Oswald is among the most harrowing and intriguing on record. It was an incident that occurred on a lonely coastal road just outside of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And while it features details that have to be found in many other cases of alien abduction, the disturbing creatures at the heart of this case are unique within the ufological record. At around 9 p.m. on October the 15th, 1979, Luli Oswald, a concert pianist and lecturer, was driving from Rio de Janeiro to Sacarima with a friend of her son known only as F.G. By just after 9.30 p.m., they were driving along a quiet coastal road when they noticed three odd-looking lights moving over the ocean. They continued on, keeping the lights in view as they did so, until they came to hills that took them off the coastal road, meaning they could no longer see the lights. They noticed how dark it had suddenly become and began to wonder if they had gone the wrong way while being preoccupied by all of these strange glows. They made the decision to turn the car around, head back to the coastal road and try to get their bearings. Bizarrely, when the headlights of the car pointed toward the coast, they began to flash of their own accord. They continued flashing as they made their way up the road. Only moments later, the engine began to cut, forcing FG to pull the car to the roadside so he could see what the problem might be. Although the lights continued to flash, FG could see no problem at all with the engine and they set off once more. They quickly corrected their route and were eventually back on the coastal road, noting that there appeared to be a huge reflection of the moon on the surface of the water. By the time they reached their destination, the three strange lights had appeared once more. They thought little more of them until it came time to make the return journey. They both decided to take the back roads and stay away from the coastal road. However, a wrong turn would take them back to the very same road they had arrived on. Only moments later, the car began to act strangely once more, this time bouncing and leaping on the road. This continued for several minutes before the vehicle came to a stop outside an abandoned factory. The entire building appeared to be lit up. However, after a moment or two, the pair realized that the glow was coming from a huge cigar-shaped object overhead. This curious aerial vehicle glowed a bright orange color and the windows were visible along the side. As they looked up at what appeared to be a gigantic craft, they noticed the three lights that had been hovering over the water heading in their direction. A moment later, the car began to bounce on the spot uncontrollably. And then everything changed. The car had stopped jumping, but they were now sitting outside a farm near a main highway. They quickly calculated they were several miles from where they had been only moments ago. FG started the car, eager to find a petrol station, fearing they would run low on petrol. To their relief, they soon found one. After paying the attendant, Luli asked if they could buy two coffees. To their shock, the attendant told them it was 2 a.m. and that they didn't serve coffee so late. Yet they believed the time was somewhere around midnight, meaning there were two hours that simply couldn't be accounted for. They felt even more uneasy when the attendant expressed his surprise that they were even on this particular road at night, as many motorists stayed clear of it due to the bizarre objects often seen flying over the highway. Feeling confused and unsettled, the pair set off for home. Over the following days, however, they would experience several strange after effects of their encounter. Luli, for example, would discover that the kidney trouble that had plagued her for years had suddenly ceased. She would, though, suffer from extremely painful watery eyes for several weeks after the incident, as well as an uncomfortable burning sensation in her chest. FG would later claim that he underwent a profound spiritual transformation following the encounter, although he couldn't explain why. What's more, when his car was later examined by UFO investigators, it was found to be highly magnetized, especially so on the driver's side. Bob Pratt and Irene Granchy would investigate the case. As well as speaking with Luli and FG, they also interviewed several local residents in the area of the incident, all of whom told them of persistent UFO activity in the region. Ultimately, 
In order to discover what happened during the missing two hours, the pair would have to undergo hypnotic regression. While FG refused to do so, Luli agreed. And around six months after their unsettling experience on the highway, she was taken back to the night in question when they were in that car outside the factory. She would recall the lights heading toward them before stating that one of them had gotten hold of the car from above. She elaborated that the car was now being moved along the ground and had become caught in a beam of light. She now became visibly anxious, stating that the car was being lifted up from the road. Above them was a black disc-shaped object, which they were heading straight for. The next thing she knew, they were inside the craft, no longer in the car, but laying naked, face down on strange marble-like tables. Luli looked around to see that they were in a room that resembled an operating theater with strange glass tubes all around the walls. Then she noticed the strange creatures around them. She described these obscure entities as looking like rats with huge ears and a long thin nose, a small mouth and overall repulsive appearance. She further offered that they were around four feet high with kind of like webbed feet. Their arms and neck appeared much too thin for the rest of their body and their skin was a dull rat-like gray color. Becoming even more alarmed, she claimed that these creatures began pulling at her hair and performing bizarre examinations on her, using strange beams of light instead of medical instruments. Even stranger, she realized that the creatures were not physically touching the instruments but appeared to be controlling them with their minds. She then revealed that as she turned her head, she could see FG on another table next to her. Then in a flash, she found herself sitting up on the table. The creatures were still around her, seemingly examining her eyes and her ears and nose. She further mentioned that throughout the entire ordeal, there was a constant odor of sulfur. Things then raced forwards once more and Luli and FG were back in the car on the road near the farm. There were several other remarkable revelations that would come from Luli's regression session. Perhaps not least that the rat-faced aliens had informed her telepathically that they resided in Antarctica and that an entrance tunnel in Patagonia led them to this secret world. There are also several other intriguing details given by Luli while under regression that show up in other cases of alien abduction. The stone or marble tape, for example, is an often repeated detail in alien abduction reports, as is the smell of sulfur and the inability to recall actually entering the ship. Do all these matching details lend Luli and FG more credibility? It was certainly the determination of Bob Pratt and Irene Granchy that they were indeed very credible and reliable witnesses. Incidentally, Luli would have several further sightings of strange glowing objects in the months that followed, including on one occasion of several orange orbs entering her bedroom. Whether these sightings were just that or were in fact other cases of alien abduction is not known. However, Many abductees often claim that they are taken by these otherworldly entities more than once. As with so many alleged encounters with otherworldly entities, the answers are frustratingly elusive. Indeed, the details of this case may be simply too bizarre for many to entertain as even remotely credible. Rat-faced aliens with webbed feet abducting people in flying saucers. But in an infinite universe where we are increasingly told that almost anything is possible Who's to say? Perhaps our concept of what might constitute an alien entity might need to be expanded to the very limits of our imagination. Just what happened to Luli Oswald and FG on that coastal road just outside of Rio de Janeiro? Were they taken on board a strange disc-shaped craft and subjected to a whole host of invasive and discomforting experiments? As with so many alleged encounters with otherworldly entities, the answers are frustratingly elusive. Indeed, the details of this case may be simply too bizarre for many to entertain as even remotely credible. Rat-faced aliens with webbed feet abducting people in flying saucers. 
Yet in an infinite universe where we are increasingly told that almost anything is possible, who's to say? Perhaps our concept of what might constitute an alien entity might need to be expanded to the very limits of our imagination.